Praise God. It's good to see you on this program today. We're so excited about having you, and I want to greet you with Jesus' joy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we appreciate your presence. Know this, that when you meet us on this program, this program is fun to listen, and we need to make sure that we do everything we can to pray for this ministry and to make sure this ministry go and work. So will you do me a favor? Will you pray for us? And will you do those things that God is asking you to do to help us to get the gospel out to the whole world for Jesus Christ? We trust that you will do that. Now, today is a very exciting part of a message to me that I believe that God has put in my heart that I want to talk to you about with a world that is so uncertain with a life that we're trying to live with peace, but there's so much unrest that we have to come to somebody who is stronger, better, and wiser than we are in order to help us live this life. And that person is Jesus Christ. And so I want to talk to you and teach to you today about resting in Him. Resting in Him is so important when it comes to this. He makes a personal bid or an invitation for all of us to come to him at any given point in time in our life when we feel overwhelmed, overworked, over over stressed, anxiety. With all of the cares of this world, he gives us a personal invitation to come to him. And before I get into this message, will you do me a favor? Will you like and share this program? If there's anything worth uh, you listening to and you'd like for somebody uh, to know what you know, invite them to listen and to share to this program. Also, it's just like finding a good restaurant. When you find a good restaurant, you don't mind sharing that this is one of the best restaurants you've ever eaten at. And so I pray that this is the same way, that you find Christ every time you tune in. So like and share. And even subscribe to our YouTube channel and then also the other platforms that we have available uh, for you. This is done only because Christ wants us to get this message out to all of you. And I want you to know that. God bless you so much for what you do. Now, resting in Him is very important. And I want you to know that every time you call Him, He hears. Just have confidence in knowing that if you come to him, he will not cast you away. He will always accept you when you come to him in honesty. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray by the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that today's message will touch the heart of the people. Oh, God, that you send it forth to accomplish in their heart what you wanted to do. So we trust you, we believe you, and we say thank you for what you're doing in our life today. For us in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, if you have a pen and a piece of paper, we're gonna go to Matthew chapter 11, and we're gonna look at verses 28 through 30. And it says this, "'Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, "'and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Get this. Jesus comes to us with a personal invitation. This is by invitation only. And you cannot crash Jesus' party. But when he invites you, you're in. No one can push you away. No one can close the door on you. No one can take away from you what you need him to do for you. He said, come unto me, which means it's a personal invitation. And it also means when he says, come unto me, it means to come closer, move closer. He says, if you want to come to me, Come on, come closer. And all of us can come close to God 
And one scripture says, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. And, you know, it's just by invitation. And no one comes to the Father except he is drawn by the Father. And so I think that Jesus set a precedence when he said that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so anyone that knows the suffering of Christ, anyone that knows what it means to go through, what you have to go through, everything that you have to suffer in this life, going to Christ is the best thing that we can do when it comes to life. And I want to talk to you about Isaiah 1 and 18 as well. Isaiah 1 and 18, it says, Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though ye uh, be red like crimson, they shall be like as wool. This is very important, very important. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. There's so many things that, that we have in life that, that crushes us, that takes us out of the atmosphere of peace, that takes away our joy, that leads us away from the things that God has brought into our world in order for us to live our best life. But most of the time, we get caught up with all the things that causes us to live in the red. I call it living in deficit. I call the inflation of life. I call it the inflation of life that causes more things to happen with us in life than it does by having the peace that we need in life with the time that we have here on earth. Isaiah said in Isaiah 55 and 1, Whoa, everyone that is thirsty, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, Come ye and buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, listen, listen at this. When he says this, he says that if you're thirsty, you can find water. He said if, you can, if you're hungry, if you come to me, I'll feed you. And then he goes on and he expresses, he says, and for your enjoyment, he says, I will cause you to have peace in places where there should be confusion. Now you think about this, and all of this is without price to you because he already paid the price. Jesus already paid the price for you and I. So there is nothing that we go through that hadn't already been paid for by Jesus. And it's just a matter of redeeming as we get the coupons of life that causes us to know that we can have just what he says we can have. We can do just what he says we can do. And most people in the extremes of life takes on a whole different form as to what it means to not have true peace and true happiness. Look at what he says in John chapter 6 and verse 37. He says, all that the Father has given to me shall come to me. All that the Father has given to me shall come to me. And him that come to me, I will in no wise cast him out. You know, there is something to be said when you look at what Jesus said there. Jesus said that, that all that comes to me by the Father's request and, and at his drawing, he said, if you come to me, he said, no wise will I cast you away. You know, some people sometimes they don't accept you because they prejudge you. And it is said that by the time a person is, is formally introduced, they have already made up their mind about the person that they're being introduced uh, to. And so Jesus is not like that. Jesus already knows your life. He already knows you messed up. He already knows that you have problems. 
He already knows what you're going through. You say, well, Bishop, it just doesn't happen like that. You don't understand. I'm so low, I can't, I can't really do what I want to do. No, that's not the whole matter. The whole matter is, is that he knows everything. You got to understand, he says to them, to the people in, in uh, Matthew chapter 11, he says, come unto me, come closer, come near. And he says, come to me alone. Come to me alone, which means that I'm the only one that can take care of what you're going through. And he, he gives you an invitation to come to him. A personal trust is what you got to have in him. You know, we trust everything else, but we don't trust God. We don't trust everything else as much as, uh, you know, we don't trust God as much as we, we, you know, we don't trust everything else. And so it's very important. It's very important that we look at it from this point of view that we know all who labor and are heavy laden. A laborer is a, a worker, particularly one who works hard. Somebody who works hard. A laborer is those who work hard. Those people who tarling, uh, which tarling with life. They're in the physical thrust of life. They're from here to there. They're going through this and that. They're having so many things happen in their life. And then they wonder why uh, that they can't do anything for God because they're tarling. Um, you know, you, you got to understand that while you're toiling with this life, you got to understand that you got to be patient and you got to wait on God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he says, now look, if you wait on him, he will renew your strength. And this is what is happening. We don't know how to rest in him. And I'll get to the acronym of rest here in a little bit. But he also says that particularly those who work hard, they are toiling. It's a physical struggle. He says they're working hard. They're working emotionally. Working hard means that you, you get emotionally involved with life and you're going through life. You got this going on. Every time you get over this, then that comes. And, and here's the struggle. The struggle is, is that you have so many things that you have to go through that you end up not knowing where God is in your life. And so you've lost his, his feel. You've lost his touch. You've lost his instruction. You've lost his ability, your ability to hear him clearly. And so it mentally wears on you because you emotionally broken. You are broken emotionally. You suffer the consequences. And that means that spiritually, you don't know where you are. Uh, and he, he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. Heavy laden means, laden means a load or weight down. You weight it down. In the Greek, it means uh, the loading of a ship or a, a beast of burden. This is what's happening. It's, you're just like a ship. There's so many things that people are putting in your life. So many things that are going on with you in your life. And, and as you're going through what you're going through, you have so many things that you fight. You have so many things that you go through that you feel like a beast of burden. Every time you turn around, you have to be the one responsible for this. You have to be the responsible one for the family. You have to be the one who everybody calls on. You have to be the one who goes through the most. You have to be the one who gives so much of your life. And this means that you are heavy laden. What happens when you're loaded beyond your strength? What happens? What happens to you if you constantly give out, give out, and nothing is ever deposited in you? You lose everything. You lose your energy. You lose your strength. You're broken in your consecration, and so you don't get a chance to think for yourself very often. You have to think about everybody else, and while doing that, you end up struggling, and you end up restless. You end up losing your rest. Rest is in the negative means that you're absent of a few things. If you can't find rest, that means that you have lost, uh, you know, there's so many uncertainties, number one. There's uncertainties in your life that take place. And when you have so many uncertainties in your life, it means that you can no longer think freely. 
and everything is in shambles. Everything is sinking. Everything is falling. And when everything is uncertain, then you go to number two, you go into fear. And then all of a sudden, you have fret about tomorrow. You have fret about this because you got all the bill collectors calling. You got all the family members calling. You got all the people who you lead are calling. You got all those people that, that maybe you have uh, taken on a responsibility to partner up with. And I mean, you got so many things and you're getting fearful, but fear is not of the Lord. The Bible said that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And because he's given us this spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind, it means that we've got it together because he, we've come to him. Thirdly is anxiety. Most people are, it's anxiousness. I mean, so much anxiousness that we've forgotten what it's like. We've forgotten what it's like to have a restful day off. We've forgotten what it's like to have peace in our own home. We're so stressed out that we can't turn our brain off at night. It's so much brain chatter in our life that, that we don't get to have the rest that we need. When Jesus is giving personal invitations to us to come to him, it also means that people are desperate now. They're in despair. They're so in despair that they have no one that they feel like they can lean on. They have no one that they feel like they can trust. They have no one they feel like loves them. And I want to share with you today that God loves you. Let me say that again. God loves loves you. So when this world was without love and it had no one to lean on, the Bible said God sent his own son that while we were yet sinners, amen, he came into this world and he gave himself uh, to us so that we don't have to pay the penalty and the price of all the things that we've done, things presently past and in the future. He took care of all of that. Can I stop and put a footnote right there for a minute? Most of us, when it comes to having someone to lean on, we start leaning to our own understanding. And the Bible says this. The Bible says that we should not lean to our own understanding. And what that means to me, the writer that wrote that, it means that we're making uh, short-term uh, decisions about something that is a long-term problem, which means that we're making temporary, uh, uh, you know, conditions to hold up something that's going to be around a long time. We're looking at this thing so differently from the way God wants us to look at it. You need to get set and get understanding to know that this pandemic is not going away. It's not going away. I believe it's here for the rest of our life. And you know what? You're going to have to learn how to deal with it. Just the way that we learn how to deal with the flu, we had to deal with. It's so many people are dying from the flu that we've quit talking about it because the pandemic is so uh, prevalent. There's a new strand that come out this week. And, you know, people are gearing up in fear about this next thing that's happening. But what we have to do is that we have to learn how to go to him which is Jesus Christ. He says, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Take my yoke upon you. And, and this means, number one, it means as a pupil who submits himself to the instructions of a teacher, Jesus said, he said, come unto me. And he says, and then he says, submit yourself unto me as a, as a pupil would to a teacher. What did Jesus say? Jesus says, hey, enroll into my school of life. That's what the invitation is. He wants you to enroll into his way of doing things. He wants you to enroll into the way that you can have life. He said, I come that you might have life, John 10. He said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. How are you going to have that abundantly the way Jesus had it is that you got to learn what he had in order to have life and peace. He says in John chapter 15, I give you something that the world can't give you, and that's joy. 
I give you so much joy. He said, but let me tell you something. He said, I give you joy, not as the world give. He said, but I give it to you that your joy might be full. That means that in all things, you are full. You are complete. He says, be my pupil or my disciple. Let me, let me, let me help you. Let me instruct you. Let me teach you how to be disciplined. A disciple means to be disciplined. And then he goes on and he talks about submitting to my instructions. If you're going to learn from Jesus, you got to be submissive. You got to, you, you don't know more than what he knows. When you go to school, we always teach our children that we have to learn from the teacher. You can't go there and teach the class because you don't know what the teacher knows. You have to submit to the teacher. He, and then the eight, he says is, lean on me. That's what he's saying. Lean on me. Receive my instructions. In the Greek, it means to take a lesson from. How many, how many are taking lessons from the word of God? Are you just letting life teach you? Are you letting the life of Jesus teach you? He's our example, and we need to let him teach us. Amen, amen to that. We have to let him teach us, and we have to learn from him. You know why? He says, because I'm meek and I'm lowly of heart. Jesus said, my resume is, first of all, I'm meek. This is the resume of Jesus, and this is what made me come to him. And, and even at a young age, I understood that I needed him more than I needed anything else. And I want you to know, to me, he has proven himself by what I call Jesus' resume. His resume is, first of all, he says, I'm meek, which means that, that he has the ability uh, to be humble. Jesus is so humble that he, had, uh, he made himself of no reputation he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but the way he took was the way of suffering. And then he says, number two, he says, my resume says, and I've proven to you that I'm gentle. As a teacher, I'm gentle. You can't teach anybody mad at them. You can't teach anybody without being humble. You can't teach anybody without uh, being gentle with them. He says, number three, I'm in control. He says, I'm in control of my whole life. And he says, I want to teach you how to be in control of your whole life. We messed up so bad that we get in and out. We're in and we're out. One day we feel good, one day we don't about our life. One day we're so happy about our life, the next day we're so crushed about our life. I used to say it like this, and, and this is the way you know I describe it. Sometimes I feel like a nut. And sometimes I don't. You know, life is such where, you know, sometimes, you know, you're not going to have it together. And that's when you need to have more Christ in you than more of you. Because if you lean to your own understanding and you try to hold up something with a temporary fix, it's not going to hold it up. The things that we think will not hold up in life. Not only did he say he was in control, he says... Not, uh, you know, he says, my resume says, and he's, these are the things that Jesus is not. Number one, he's not harsh. You know, have you ever seen some mean Christians? I mean, they, they, they hurt your feelings all the time. Every time you leave them, you feel worse than it was than when you, you came into their presence. So you kind of run from those Christians because they're just too harsh. It, they make you feel like they've never done anything wrong in their life. They make you feel like they got it all together. They make it seem like they're perfect, but they are harsh. Jesus said, I'm not harsh. When you come to me, I want you to know I'm so understanding to your problem. And John, uh, Paul writes, and he says, we have a high priest who's been touched with every feeling that we have. Every, every emotion that we go through, he's been touched by it. And then he says, number two, he says, not only am I not harsh, he says, I'm not overbearing. Have you had people that were just overbearing in, in your life? 
I mean, they, they, I mean, they tell you everything. Well, if I were you, you, I would do this. You ought to do this. You, you ain't doing yourself nothing. You need to stop this. You need to, you need to do. You need to do. And most of the time, they've never done any of this in their life. None of us has ever been through a pandemic. So we're walking around here being harsh and overbearing to each other when, when we've never been through this, and we have to trust God. And we hurt each other's feelings because one area you're strong at and other areas you're weak at. And so everybody's pointing at your weakness, but they never see your strength. And it makes you oppressed. It means that Jesus said, I'm never oppressive. I will never put no more on you than you're able to bear. I'll never take you to a place and teach you something that you can't learn from. He says, when I get you in my class. He said, I will make sure that you learn and you will grow and you will mature. The experience of those who come to Christ. Let me give you some people who, who gain experience from going to God. Oh, number one, Noah. Noah. Noah had God and God created for him an ark. And that ark became a a haven or a place of rest. It became a place from the storm. It became a place for the saving of his family. And not only that, but Noah had connection with God. And though he looked crazy, can you imagine preaching for 120 years, one message? And then everybody telling you, you ought to change that message because nothing is happening. You know, you're living a certain life according to the way Christ teaches you, and you're having an impact. You're having an impact on life, and 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 because you're having an impact on life, people saying that they're tired of hearing that, they're tired of hearing that. There's so many messages that people say they're tired of hearing from me, but I'm going to keep on preaching it. You know why? Because that lets me know that you're not safe. That lets me know that you're not in a place of peace. Look at Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha, after they got over the initial shock of who they were talking to, when they said, if you would have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, even now, he said, even now, I have the authority. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. We know that, Jesus, but that's going to happen in the general resurrection. He says, even now, when you know who he is in your life, you have an even now spirit. That means that even now, the way things look, it may look like you're not coming out of this. It may look like you're not going to make it over this. It may look like you're going to crumble and you're going to fall underneath all this. But I promise you, Jesus said, Father, you've always heard me. He says, not for the ones who do believe. He said, but for those who don't believe. He says, show forth your power. And then he called Lazarus from the grave, and Lazarus was given back to his sisters. And then he became so involved with Jesus, even more so than it was before, that the Bible says many came to hear Jesus preach, but most of the people came to see whom Jesus had raised from the dead. That's the way your life is. Every ministry got to have a Lazarus. Every person in life has got to have a Lazarus experience. Things that were dead in your life and people saw you fall beneath and they saw you die from. These are the times where Jesus shows up and he tells you to come on. When you're in the water and you're sinking and, and Jesus has told you to come in to, to where he's at and you're in the water of life and you're sinking, Peter, you then have to get up. Peter is denying Jesus. He's in the life, water of life. He's sinking. But here's what he did. He cries out to Jesus. And Jesus forgives him. And he tells him. He says, Peter, look. He says, I'm giving you another chance. He said, if you love me, he said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. And he finally gets it. After failing that test, with three questions, he turns around with Jesus' three questions. He missed two, but the third one was a bonus question. Jesus said, do you love me? And he finally gets it. He said, Lord, not only do I love you, he said, I will follow you the rest of my life. 
And then that's when Jesus graduates him into life with full benefits. And you hear Peter taking control of the church in Acts chapter 2. Thomas, after unbelief, was another person. Thomas after Thomas after having all of these things, all of these things uh, come into play and he would not believe. He said, unless I touch him and the places where I saw him crucified, I will not believe. Jesus shows up and tells Thomas to hold him, to handle him. And he says, no, Lord, I see. He said, but blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. Are you one of those people who, who yet believe? I yet believe that I wasn't there, but I know the effects of what he did. All of us who have tasted of his gentleness, we have to understand he's lowly, which means that he's humble. Jesus is never, ever, look at this. Jesus is never, he's lowly, he's humble. Here he is. He says, I am, he said, look at what he says. He said, I'm never, number one, impatient. He says, I'm never impatient to those who learn slow, who are slow learners. He said, I'm never impatient to those people who are slow learners. He said, I'm never intolerant to those who stumble. He says, I'm never, I never demand through irritation. I never command you to do anything because I'm frustrated or I'm, I'm, I'm irritated. And here's what I want to do, and I want to bring this thing to a conclusion. He says in Matthew 11, 29b and 30, ye shall find rest for your soul. When you shall find rest for your soul, it means that the acronym for rest is you can reclaim your energy, your strength, and your thoughts. And this is where we are. We have not yet learned how to rest in him. We need to find him because we need to reclaim our energy. We've lost the energy to keep going. We have been crushed by life. And I'll come back and I'll talk about this some more maybe next week. But I just had to tell you, that we need to rest in him so that we can reclaim our energy, our strength, and our thoughts. I love you, and I want to tell you what Jesus said. Come to Jesus, and you will find rest for your soul. Father, in Jesus' name, every person that heard me today, no matter what time it is, it may be listening in a rebroadcast, but whatever the case is, Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that every person who hear this will gather strength from it. They'll reclaim their energy, their strength, and their thoughts. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you forgive us all as sinners. We repent, we turn from our ways, and we come back to you. You're married to the backslider. That's what you said. You said that those who come to you in no wise will you cast them away. So, Father, don't cast us away today. We want more of you. Forgive us for our transgressions, our sins, our walk away from you. And so, Lord, we repent and we turn back to you now in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. But, hey, this is all for you. We do this all for you. I'm going to ask the announcer to uh, put the ways to give on the screen for about a minute so that you can gather that. Please don't click off until you have found that ways that you can be a blessing to this ministry. And for the members, I want to ask you to continue to be faithful. There is most of you that, that are faithful, but there are some that are slacked off. But I want to tell you, do what you can to help further the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love you. Until next time, peace.